Welcome to the Metal Bob Live Podcast. I am your host, Metal Bob. Today's show is brought to you by Legend Picks. That's L-E-G-E-N-D-P-I-C-K-S dot com. Visit Legend Picks for all your custom guitar pick needs. And also, artist Jeremiah Kalik. You can find him on Instagram at J-J-K-A-L-L-E-C-K. There you can find his art, videos, and more. Links to our sponsors are listed in the episode description. On today's show, I had the honor of speaking with bassist Perry Richardson of Striper. We talk about how he landed the Striper gig, his time in Firehouse, and more. So sit back, have a listen, and enjoy the show. Thank you. Hello, Perry. Hi, uh, what's up? How you doing, buddy? Good to, good to hear from you. I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. About as good as we can do right now. I know, yeah. We, we're kind of stuck at home, but uh, we're making the best of it. Well, good deal, man. Hey, I appreciate you taking your time out of your day to call in, man. really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Does this sound okay, or I need to change uh, headphones or what? No, you sound great, brother. Is that okay? All right. So, man, where to start with you, man? You've you've uh, you've done quite a bit in your career, man. Um, <laughs> I've been lucky. You've been. I, I, we, I feel we, like I've uh, been pulling the wool over everybody's eyes for a long time here, but uh, <laughs> no, man. I've been. I mean, it's all I've ever done, and I just refused to quit. I guess that was the difference between me and uh, a lot of other dudes that I grew up with playing with and stuff, and. I just knew that's what I wanted to do, and I loved it so much. And, you know, I sacrificed a lot and uh, just refused to clear. And that's why, I, you know, I guess that's why I'm still here. Well, we appreciate having you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a good ride, I tell you what. From, uh, you know, from from rock to country and back to rock again, it's, uh, I, I just, um, very blessed and honored to be with Striper now. I just can't tell you how freaking happy I am to be here and what a great bunch of guys they are. And I, 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 I feel, feel lucky, you know, it's awesome. Absolutely. Well, obviously my first encounter with you was, you know, back in the Max Warrior slash Firehouse days. Uh, can, <laughs> it was a long time ago. It is, buddy. But can, can you give us a, <laughs> can you give us a little rundown how, how you know, Max, Max Warrior and Firehouse became? Well, Max, we started, CJ and I started that band God, back in 1980, I think. He had moved down from Pennsylvania and uh, met up with me, a buddy of mine, got us together, and we started the band. My dad built us a, a, a rehearsal room out by our house, and we were in there every day, man, rehearsing away. And, you know, wanted to get out and start playing, so we... As soon as we got enough songs together, we hit the road in like 81. And uh, Max Warrior stayed out for, I think, until 87. We played almost every day. I mean, we were playing seven nights a week. We'd take Christmas week off, and that was about it. And uh, we were really burnt out. And a lot of the guys were done, you know, making 100 bucks a week for seven years. And, uh, and, (laughs) So that kind of broke up, and the so CJ went off, and I I went off and uh, played with Nantucket for a couple of years, and '87 and '88 up in Raleigh, and uh, that that time he had uh, well we had met the uh, Bill and Michael from they were in a band called White Heat, so we could we took CJ and I uh, just join forces with those two guys and put uh, Firehouse together. And that that was in 88. Uh, we got a band house in Charlotte and just started plugging away, writing and recording everything we could. And uh, just got a lot of uh, attention there. We released a song on a radio station in Charlotte and one in Myrtle Beach. And the song went to number one in both stations. So all the uh, local r- record reps and that were in Charlotte at the time, back in the day, they were uh, all calling New York and LA saying, you need to come check this band out. So we got a 
bunch of labels to fly down to Charlotte to see us. We never had to go anywhere. Nice. And it uh, it just worked out, and that that's how it all started. And then uh, after I left Firehouse in 2000, we just got I just gotten uh, got a little tired of it, and I was not, you know, I, was, I just had enough, and uh, wanted to do a country thing, so I moved to Nashville and. Uh, Ended up playing. I was going to want to start a band, but I ended up before I ever got that going. I ended up start, started playing with uh, Craig Morgan, and uh, did that for like ten years, I guess. And Trace Atkins called and wanted me to go play with him. I did that for a couple of years, and then I came back to Craig for a couple of more years before the striker thing fell in my lap, and uh, that's where we're at now. Okay. Well, if I can back up just a little bit. So, yeah, I was I was kind of curious. I know you said that you'd gotten a little burnt out being in Firehouse. I mean, was that like a mutual thing? I mean, you're still, obviously, you're still buddies with all the guys. I mean, there was no hard feelings when you left the band. No, we, I mean, at the time, I was, we were fed up with each other. You know, it was like CJ and I had been together for that long. And we were just tired of each other, I think. And, uh I no, we're all great friends now. I mean, all that crap we put behind us, and of uh, you know, I, I I love those guys, and they're still really good friends of mine. I go and see them and hang out whenever I can. We got to do the uh, the Monsters of Rock cruise together this year, and it was great to see them and hang with them. And CJ and I went to see a couple of shows together. It was great, and uh, they sound really good, man. It's just uh, Brought back some great memories, but uh, now we're good friends now, and it's all cool. Nice, yeah. You know, taking you back to Craig, I think it was Craig Morgan, or it may have been Trace Atkins. I don't know, but my wife and I we used to go to this country fest every year in Kadot, Wisconsin, and the. Oh yeah, I know you you guys were playing out there one day, and my wife had went, and I'd stayed back this year, and uh, she called me, and she says, "Hey," she said, "the dude from Firehouse is playing." I'm like firehouse ain't playing country fest she said no the dude from firehouse and i'm like which dude from firehouse and then you know we kind of got chatting back and forth she said the bass player i'm like oh perry richardson said yeah he's playing with craig morgan i'm like oh shit you know that's cool and i'm like you know that was a fun conversation i had over the phone with her she called me like during the set and was telling me that you were playing and i thought that was pretty awesome that's funny man i know craig is a he's a great guy dude i had such a good time with him and uh He's he's still doing good, man. He's plugging away. Got another TV show coming out. His third TV show, and uh, so he's doing good. And uh, but it was a trip, you know, going from metal, rock, pop, rock, whatever I was in to country it was a lot more laid back. And you know, back when I started, I mean, it wasn't a lot of long haired, tattooed guys in country music. It was it kind of broke broke the door down for them and then all of a sudden it's you know weird if you don't have a tattoo now well it, you know it's but, funny, uh, it's funny you said that because it looks like a rock and roll band up there with the country singer now i mean it really does a lot of right. a lot of the it, bands it are. does i know you know you can't tell and you, it's not really country anymore anyway is it so you know a lot of pop going on right now in the country world there is i mean there's a few guys that you can kind of that are kind of still carrying that old torch band, but I mean, yeah, a lot of it's pop now and, you yeah. know, or rock, you know, country rock or however you want to describe it. Yeah. 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 But, you know. Yeah. I just wish, I wish Southern Rock had come back. What? I mean, come on. You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're bringing country and rock together. Shouldn't make Southern Rock, but it doesn't. I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. God. No, I that's do miss that. That's great though, man. But uh, I want to go back to you said I know you played with Nantucket, and that was like that was before the Firehouse gig. Yeah, that was in uh, that was eighty eighty seven and eighty eight, and maybe the end of eighty six. So that ran a couple of years. Yeah, right on. That was cool too, man. I I loved Nantucket. That was, what a great band they were, and oh, they they're amazing. They were. God, they got started back in what seventy eight, yeah, seventy nine. That first album came out, and they had some huge tours. Man, they toured with Kiss and Aerosmith and ACDC and all these bands, and 
it just didn't break for them. I don't know why. Right. And they were so good. It was just, uh, I don't know. I mean, they, I mean, and they're still doing shows now. So they're, they are, uh, they're still cranking it out, man. It sounds great too. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people, you know, they kind of got lost in the shuffle there, man, you know, in the late seventies, early eighties. But I think people now are starting to realize, you know, they're discovering the albums now. But yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, it was. There was a lot of stuff that came out right then that was just so freaking good, man. You know, from Boston and Van Halen, all that stuff. It was easy to get lost in that shuffle, I guess. Right. Yeah. You know? So hey, I I uh, want to ask you something else. So back in 1995, you were inducted into the South Carolina Entertainment Hall of Fame. Can you reflect on that a little bit? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, that was that was a nice little honor there. I mean, that was, uh, and I was inducted with. And unfortunately, he didn't make it to the ceremony. But Chris Rock was inducted that same year I was. And uh, oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I was. I was hoping he would be there, but he wasn't there. Uh, he couldn't make it. Um, it was it was great, dude. I mean, to be, uh, you know. To get in any Hall of Fame is great. I guess I'll settle for South Carolina if I can't make the uh, the national one. Hey, well, one's better than nothing, right? Hey, dude, you deserve whatever <laughs> you get, man. Not, you guys, de- say, you deserve to be a national one too, man. <laughs> I take what I can get. No, it's it's, it's cool that you know. Uh, of course, not a lot of and been a lot of bands from South Carolina. You know, it's been. Back in the day, you had Marshall Tucker, and then you had Booty, and, you know, I mean, it's not not overrun with, uh, with bands, I guess. So, uh, no, but it was a great honor, though. Yeah. Awesome. So that brings me to the present time now. So can you give me a little, uh, give me a little story on how the Striper gig came, came about for you? Uh, well, I, I mean, I didn't know anything about it. I, I was, uh, a really good friend of mine that used to be a big Max Warrior fan and lived up in, he lived up in Greenville, North Carolina. And he was producing or promoting shows and, uh, he had run into Striper's manager. They were talking about doing a show and, uh, he got wind that they might be looking for a bass player in the near future. And he was like, Hey, I got this guy's name and number. You should call him. And he gave him my, he gave Stryker's manager my info. And it just turned out that this, their manager played in a band that opened for like the first firehouse show we ever did was in the Switch in Raleigh. And his band at that time opened for us. So, so he knew all about me and he, you know, he'd been following me from even Max Warrior days and on up through firehouse and all that so he knew all about me and uh he was he and i was in nashville at the time and he had an office in nashville and uh he called me up one day he's like hey he introduced himself and managed striper and said you'd be interested in coming by and talking to me about striper gig i'm like yeah sure so i went down and we met up at a little coffee shop and talked for about an hour and he uh he really pushed uh, the guys to uh, take a look at me, and he, he he liked me a lot, and so uh, they uh, they agreed to uh, give me a shot at it. They uh, uh, talked to Michael one day, and he gave me four or five songs to learn, and uh, he said, uh, you know, in a few weeks we'll fly you up, and we'll just sit here at the house and. Have a little jam session, see how it goes. So I, I said, cool. So I learned the learned the songs, and learned the vocal parts, and we went up there and flew up. And then, uh, it was about a month later, and uh, he just had his little rehearsal recording room at his house, and we went in there and everybody played. Robert had his electronic drums. It sounded like crap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we were, Jamming through little tiny amps and it didn't sound good. And I was like, oh God, man, this is bad. And they loved it. They were like, I, I was like, okay, great. And then when we were playing through the songs, we weren't singing or anything. Michael wasn't even singing. And I was like, God, I don't even know these songs that well. I need a vocal going on. But 
we were playing them. And then we'd done playing the songs like, that's great. Now let's sing some. So we just, just started singing without music, right? And I was like, oh, gosh. Okay. So we're doing this acapella harmonies and all the, along you know, in the courses. And they freaking loved it. They were like, man, they freaking nailed it. So he said, we'll let you know. And, you know, I, I was only, I wasn't there for that long. And we'll let you know it's all good. So it was like two days later they called me. They didn't interview anybody else or anything. They're like, dude, we knew from the minute you walked in, you were the one. We didn't want to say anything then. But like, the gig is yours if you want it. And I, you know, of course I freaked out. And uh, that's how that all went down. Nice. Yeah, man, you've had a nice run with those guys so far. I mean, and what a great bunch of guys, too. I've met them on several occasions, man, Michael and Robert, and, you know, and Oz. Those guys are just so cool, man. And I'm, uh, I, no, I love them, man. I, I imagine them. they're great to work with, bro. They are. It's like it. no drama. Everybody's cool. It's unusual for a rock band. Right. That you like everybody. <laughs> right. Ex so, exactly, man, and you actually so you actually good. recorded the on the last album, Goddamn Evil, correct? No, I wasn't on that one. You did not I, record. They were, I did not. They were working on that when I went up there to to uh, do that when I first met them. I, they were already in the process of recording. Already so, in the process. Okay. And but... yeah, and I had they're like I had to give Craig. I was still playing with Craig Morgan, so I had to give Craig a notice, and I stayed with him another three weeks so he could find somebody. Okay. And uh, but uh, I just we just finished recording the new album. Absolutely, I knew uh, that. Yes. The, uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, so Michael just finished. Uh, he's actually finishing up vocals and. His lead guitar parts, I think, right now, today or tomorrow, he'll be done with that. And uh, there, we did it all the, you know, all the basic tracks together at the studio in Massachusetts. And he did the vocals and his lead parts at home, and Oz did his lead parts at home. And they just sent them to the studio. So I am so looking forward to hearing this thing all put together because I really hadn't heard it yet. <laughs> well, you know, I've heard the music, but and I've heard the choruses. We did all the background vocals in the studio, so all the choruses. I kind of know what that's going to be like. But right. as far as the, the melodies and uh, and the lyrics and all go, I mean, I heard bits and pieces, but I really haven't heard anything finished yet. So I'm I'm chomping at the bit, man, to hear this thing. So it's, it's going to be amazing. It's oh. so. Sounds so good. I mean, I never got such a good bass tone. I I got a playing Roscoe basses now. They're from North Carolina, and it's a plug that thing in, and it, the engineer turned around. It's like, oh my god, what is that? <laughs> right, <on. laughs> Roscoe. It sounds so good. The drum sounds are amazing, and the guitar tones. I mean, we just worked and worked and worked using like five or six different amps on everything, and just tweaking and. And Michael's so good at that, man. Just uh, got a great ear. Yeah. And, and you talk. Uh, it's going to be a freaking killer sounding record. Now, is it going to be as heavy? Now, the last few albums are really heavy, man. Is this one going to be pretty heavy also? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. There's a couple of real fast, heavy songs on it. There's a lot of groove oriented stuff. It's just, oh, you know, just, I just love It's, and real melodic and and memorable stuff. It's uh, going to be really good. Nice. I mean, it, it, it'll cover it'll cover a pretty wide range of stuff too. I mean, there's some really 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 fast stuff, and then mid range stuff. There's a ballad that, well, not really a ballad, but it's a it's almost a freaking southern rock sounding song. Okay. So that'll be a surprise for everybody. That was our ballad. It, uh, it's it's uh, it's good. I mean, I love everything we did. So, is there a title for the new album? No, not yet. We're still okay. We're still kicking around a few ideas on that. Cool. Um, yeah. Right on. Well, hey, man. You know, the the last few Striper albums, man, have been just killer. And it's like, you know, they they've released some of the best stuff that I've listened to over the last, you know, seven eight years. I mean, 
few of their last well, records. Michael's a great writer, man. Oh. I don't know how he does it. He goes in and just, in two weeks, he can have a whole thing written. Yeah. You know, and, like, God, how do you do that? And you, and you talk about the sing- He's putting out great stuff. Yeah, I know. And you talk about a singing fool, man. That guy is amazing. <laughs> Jesus. He is amazing. God. God, he sings. Still got a great range. You and know. it's, uh, man, I know, it's it's something else. He, it's, uh, I mean, to look over there and see him and Oz, Robert on stage when we're playing, it's just, sometimes it's surreal because they were, they were one of my favorite bands, you know, back in the 80s. And I, I don't know, through the 90s too, I always loved them. Oh, absolutely. And, to end up playing with them, it's like a dream come true, you know. So, yeah, yeah I can't. No, it's, so, it's a good you, situation to be in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do do you mind, do you mind me asking how is Oz? Oz doing pretty good. Yeah, he's doing good. He's uh, they're keeping an eye on everything, and he's staying on a strict diet, and and he's on some medication, but uh, they're keeping an eye on hooking his so. Uh, Tumor doesn't grow any, and oh, we're just taking it day by day. That's good to hear, man. I love that guy, man. I wish him the best. Yeah, I know. He's a great dude. Man. So, uh, also, I, I did want to know, so I know you had played with Trey Sack and then Craig Morgan. Did you ever do any recording with either one of those guys? No, no, no. Nashville, dude, that's a whole another ball game right there. You got your touring band, and then you got your all the guys are playing the studio. Okay. You got your songwriter niche. You got so many niches in Nashville. It's ridiculous. So to break into that, uh, you know, that wasn't even something I looked into even trying to do. Okay. I, you know, it was, uh, he had his own people that they recorded almost every record with, you know? So yeah, yeah I kinda... guys are amazing too, dude. They yeah. go in and, they won't even hear this. They don't even know the songs or anything. They'll listen to an acoustic version of it and go in there and play it. Two takes are done. Right. It's, a, it's ridiculous well, you know, how good they are. But that's all they do, you know. So. Well, I, I always wondered. I knew there was a lot of that. I knew there was a lot of times that the guys that were touring with the band weren't the ones played on the record. I do know that. But then there's, are, are there occasions where the, some of these bands do record the albums? Yeah, yeah, there's a there's some rare occasions of that happening. I mean, there was it happened a lot in the early nineties, but where when I got back into country, man, when bands like Diamond Rio and Little Texas and all these band bands, Shenandoah bands were coming out that were great, right. you know. That's what really got me all the harmonies and all all those bands played all this stuff in the studio. Exactly. And that's how I thought it was, but you know, when you get there, so yeah, I'm glad you know, I heard you mentioned solo artists. You mentioned Shannon Doe. I just had uh, Jim Seals on a couple weeks. Did ago. you really, man? I love them. They were so yeah. good. Are, are so good. Hey, yeah. What's it got? Singer's name Marty. Uh, uh Marty Raybon. Marty Raybon. God, what a voice! Yes. I just love his voice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I just had Jim on, and we talked about it, man. That you, you talk about a great band. Good lord. They were good, boy. Good Lord. Then Diamond Rio. I just love Diamond Rio. They were, I got to go. I met, and then Little Texas, too. All Both of those bands, I became really good friends with a couple of the guys in each band. And Man, I'll tell you what. I was on the set of one of the videos Diamond Rio did back in the 90s and hung out in the, when Little Texas in the studio with them when they were doing that Eagles Eagles album and all the different artists were on doing Eagles songs and got to hang out with them doing that. It was, it was a great, great time. The early nineties for country was all amazing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, man. Well, it sounds like you've got to do a little bit of everything, man. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I grew up, my dad played in a country band, so that's what I, I grew up on that Southern gospel, which is pretty basically kind of a country feel to it anyway, but uh, so it's in my blood, you know. I uh, you know, sang in a gospel quartet when I was a kid, and uh, that's how all of it got started. Is there any uh, country artist that you're kind of interested in to now or listening to at the time? No, uh-uh. 
Not no, a whole, I don't. Not a whole lot, huh? I don't. No, I don't listen to country anymore. I'm, I haven't heard. I mean, if I do, I listen to old stuff, and that's, you know, I go back and listen to some Haggard or, or Rio or something like that. But I, everything I heard here on the radio, like my wife will turn the radio on when we leave the house for the dogs, and it's on a country station. That's the only time I ever hear it, and every time I hear it, I do not like what's going on on there. So it's like kind of lost the interest in it, you know. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, really, you're right, though. I mean, there's there, there's a few guys. I mean, I mean, if I had to pick somebody right now that I, you know, they're like Luke Combs, maybe, and like Eric Church. Some of those guys are still kind of holding the. Floor. Yeah, Church is bad, dude. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. a great guy, man, and. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I we mean, got we did a lot of shows with them. With, He'd open for us when I was, you know, with Craig back in the day before he got broke big, and they were great, dude. I love their band and all. They're, they're oh my gosh, he, yeah, he's really good. Yeah, yeah, and you know, then there's a few of them, you know, like and Luke Combs. You know, he's a young kid, man, but he's he's killing it. And uh, but you know, like you said, though, a lot of it's just kind of real poppy now, and it's just it's lost the feel, man. And I understand that hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, it's like they need a new genre. You need a <laughs> you need to split country up into a couple of different genres yeah. anymore. But uh, a buddy of mine calls uh, it bro country, but I'm like, kind of always got a kick out of that. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh but, god, yeah. I think we'll probably have a you know it'll come back around. Oh, I mean, it, it it will, man. It, it always does. It'll come back. I mean, and it's still out there. Like I said, you got Church, you know, Lucas Nelson. I mean, Willie Nelson's boy. Some of the stuff he's doing is amazing. And, yeah. You I've know. Heard, yeah, I've, heard, I've heard a, watched a couple of his videos. It was really good. Yeah, there's some yeah. there's some good stuff out there, man. But, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff that, that's overshadowing you have to it. Search, yeah, you have to search it out. Yes, you do. <laughs> that's what, you have to look too hard for it. Absolutely. That's not good. <laughs> Well, Matt, hey, is there anything else that you would like to promote at this time? You got your, you got a website, or do you have anything uh, personal that you would like to let everybody know about? No, dude, I, no, I don't have a website. I, I got a fan page on Facebook. You can go there and keep up with what's going on with us. And uh, I just can't wait for this virus stuff to be over and get back on the road playing. So I just like to tell everybody, dude, just everybody stay at home. Let's get this over with, right? I've got people around here who are still going out like there's nothing wrong and still spreading it around like crazy. So yes, just stay at home. Gosh, mighty, I just don't get it. And yep. um, it, we need to get this over with, knock it out, and get back to get back to play and get back to business, right? Yeah, absolutely, so, man. I I, I get better you. to do it now and get it over with. <laughs> yeah, I'm chomping at the bit for some live music, man. It's been kind of rough, man. And uh... I know, yeah, it's been terrible. I mean, we we had places. We we got back from Mexico like three months, three three and a half months ago, and it's two months. I don't know how long ago it was. Had played since, and it just seems like a lifetime ago already. And it's you know we might not be playing until the fall. Who knows? So it's gonna be a I don't. Know, it's gonna be gonna be tough going all summer without playing that that hadn't happened since 1980 nice. <laughs> so it's going to be tough but i'm going to have to get through this and uh, we'll come back out on the other side that's awesome man well perry man i really appreciate your time today um you know happy easter to you and your wife man i, I thank you very much for taking time out of your day to do this and uh, it means a lot to us you're very welcome. Happy Easter to you and everybody listening, and uh, we'll see you guys on the road, man. All right, brother. Hopefully we can have you back on in the near future. You will do. Anytime. All right, buddy. You take care of yourself. Be safe. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That concludes today's episode of the Metal Bob Live podcast. Please see our sponsor links, and thank you for listening. Metal Bob out. <laughs>